Hello everybody, Martin here and I'm back with a new series of tutorials, one I've been actually promising for far too long. But now I was finally able to record this series of four videos where I will explain my personal approach to making beards and hair directly in Blender. As you can see, I already have my human base mesh prepared here with some rig, active shape keys and everything. And if you've been following my recent videos and live streams, you probably know I started using Reillusion Character Creator for this purpose. Let's set aside how I got the model to Blender and set up the shaders. That's something you can learn, for example, from the latest live stream package on my Gumroad. I go into a lot of detail there. Instead, let's jump directly into beard creation. The first thing I do is I start creating my vertex groups, which will limit the regions where my beard will appear. You do it here in the Object Data Properties tab, and you have to hit this little plus button to be able to add a new empty vertex group. And name it of course, because having multiple unnamed groups can become quite a mess. Into this group, we now select and add all the vertices where we want the beard to grow. And for this sort of job, there is always best to have some sort of reference, right? And, oh, look here, an Assassin's Creed Odyssey reference. The model of Leonidas, to be precise, which I think the authors did a terrific job at. And what do we have here? Some more Odyssey reference. It's not that I liked the game so much. In fact, story and content-wise, it was quite atrocious, in my opinion. But the world and the character designs were great, so I have all I need right here. And here to change it up, some awesome painting of a Spartan King Agis III by one of my favorite artists, Francesco Oliveras. Such a badass he is. Uh, not only Francesco, but also the Spartan. And definitely notice these little white hairs in the beard. We will make those too, of course. Ideally, you would get a real-world reference, that is always recommended, but I was so happy with these that I felt I do not need to search further. So definitely gather your images, study the direction, length and shape of the beard and hair, and then based on that, paint your vertex groups and always keep looking at the reference in general. Which you probably already know from all the different tutorials you've watched in the past, but yeah, it's important. And if you're a man, you have a slight advantage, of course, because you can just walk to a mirror, uh, if you have a beard, that is. In my case, I chose this region, leaving out the lips and adding a bit down here, around the ears, going all the way up here. When I was happy with the selection, I clicked this little assign button with the beard group selected. As a next step, I usually like to go into the white paint mode and soften some of these edges a tiny bit with this blur tool, especially up here, don't forget the other side of course, and down here. I tend to be very careful around the lips, because if some of the weight seeps onto the lips and, Zeus forbid, onto the teeth, well, you'll have hair in the character's mouth. So after you achieve something like this, switch back to edit mode, and just to be sure, Invert your selection with Ctrl I, hit Ctrl minus on the numpad, and this way you will reduce the selection by one row of polygons, and hit this remove button, which will ensure no polygons outside of that beard area were added to your vertex group. Now let's very quickly set up the particle system for the beard. Click this plus sign, name your particle system, as well as your particle slot. First things first, change this to hair, and whoa, what happened here? No worries, it's just that we have a lot of very long hair distributed all over the body. And that's where the vertex group we just made comes in. You can scroll down here and in the density pulldown, choose the beard group. Now back up here, we can leave the number of hair to 1000, but play around with the length here. Of course, this will depend on the scale of your scene. I'm going with how the character creator imported the model into my scene. And I figured that generally for short beard, it's best to start with 0.02 or even 0.01. And then we will play around with the length in the grooming stage. Maybe even 0.005. Yeah, that seems good enough for now. And don't worry if the beard now seems very thin, we will add more hair later using children particles. Before that though, 
to see the hair better in the viewport, switch to the material properties and add a new shader underneath all the other shaders you are using on your character model. These days I am pretty much using just this principled hair PSDF shader with slightly higher values here. I also like to set a darker color in this viewport display because then the beard will be much more visible right in the 3D viewport. Let's leave it as it is now, it's just a temporary shader and in the next part of the series we will play around with it much more. To assign the shader to your particles, go back to the particle system menu and underneath the render tab choose the beard material here. Alrighty, now's the time to activate the children particles, because while the base hair is very thin, the children that are instanced for each of the base hair will make it as thick as we want, and since these will be instances, it will not take so much of the performance. We will choose the interpolated ones, interpolated, uh, interpolate their position between several base particles, so they are much better for this sort of beard, because they are more evenly distributed. Here, go with just 20, both in the viewport display and in the render. And while this looks kinda okay when it comes to thickness, we really need to get to that one most important step now, the grooming, which is basically a virtual combing of the hair particles. To do that, simply hit Ctrl Tab and switch to this particle edit. You will notice the children disappeared, just for the sake of making the process less taxing on the performance. You can always activate the children right here and if you encounter no lag, you can groom even with the children active. Anyway, I will not activate them, I find it easier to just comb the base hair and here is where the reference you've gathered of course comes in handy because based on it you can see the direction of various parts of the beard and in which way you should comb it. The process itself is, I think, pretty intuitive. You basically just stroke the hair particles until they fold the way you want them. Just try it and it actually is quite a bit of fun. Now I'd like to draw your attention down here, you will discover there is several ways to manipulate with your hair in this mode. We are now currently in the point selection mode, where you are basically manipulating with the various points the curve of the hair consists of. Most probably though, you will be by default in this path mode, where you will be combing the actual curve of the hair. It is not too important right now, but we will come back to this soon. So let's work in the path mode now and finish up combing the beard and when you're done you can try out various other tools this particle edit mode provides. Most of these tools on the left are pretty self-explanatory I think. Uh, first one we will use is this cut tool to get rid of this hair right here. You will find that sometimes when the hair originates on a difficult curved spot it's better to switch to x-ray view and then you will have no trouble just get rid of the hair like this. Now some more combing, I will be polishing the grooming throughout the whole process so don't be afraid to always switch between tools improving the flow of your particles. Next up is this add brush which well adds particles. When it comes to beards and hair, I almost always set the count of add particles to 1 and go around adding single hair with each click. So we can see I have an empty spot here, so let's add one. And I have mirroring activated, which you can turn off right here in the end menu on the right. With that, let's carefully add a few particles here and there, where you feel like more beard should be present. Now combat some more. And here you can see a thing you will probably run into when you start this grooming process. We added a hair, we want to comb it, but we don't want to change the way we've combed the rest of the hair. Well for that, you can fortunately select individual particles. Just switch back to the point mode, hit C for circle select and just select this hair. Don't worry if you've selected just a small part of it, you can then hit Ctrl L and it will select the rest. And now when you start combing, you will comb just this selected hair. It is definitely one of the most useful tricks I have ever learned in this area. And I think it was Kent Trammell from CG Cookie who showed me this in one of his tutorials. So thanks Kent. But when we look at the reference I gathered, you can clearly see that some of the regions are actually longer or shorter than others. For that, we of course have this length tool here. Uh, let's very quickly use it on this region along the chin, trying to achieve the Spartan look. 
And anytime you overdo it with the length, it's actually better to cut it away instead of undoing because the cutting away process will give you various lengths and in the long run, this will make the beard look more natural. After some more polishing and combing, get back to the object mode and see the result. And we can see clearly that some of the regions down here are a bit too long. Uh, so what we can do is actually to switch the functionality of the length tool up here to shrink. And then get shrinking. Usually these areas down here below the chin tend to be shorter and we can maybe lengthen these ones on the sides. Okay, some more shaping of the chin now to make it more irregular. Uh, what I don't really like is how uniform is this area right here. It's basically a big clump of pretty regular hair with the same length. And there are several ways we can improve this, starting with some effects for the children particles. What I found is that these clumping and roughness options are one of the most important ones to make your hair systems look more random and natural. Moreover, what I like to do is to activate this clumping curve and play around with it. The way you should think about it is that the left side is the root of the hair and the right one is the tip. Now when you have this point down here, it means there is a maximum clumping going on at the root and here minimum clumping at the tip, so it gives you this shape. You can even add more points to really have a complete control over the shape. Now we won't do anything crazy like this. Instead, let's just lower this point a little. This will give a tiny bit of clumping at the roots, drawing the children together a bit. This way it makes it a bit more patchy, which I like, especially for these short hair at the sides. Next, we give the children some roughness. This basically crumples the hair, giving it more irregular shape. Uniform roughness of 0 0.2 with size of 1 and endpoint roughness of 0 0.4. These are usually the values I like to start with. You can even give the particles some advanced kink effects. In this case, something very, very subtle, like this wave effect with 0 0.5 clumping and a frequency of 8 will do. Uh, let's leave it for now. We will get back to this menu in later chapters. It is also important to adjust the shape of your hair particles. So let me increase it here, put two meters here, 0 0.5 at the tip. And yeah, from the values, this seems kind of large, but when you look down here, you can see a scale of 0 0.01. So in reality, the hair diameter is now two millimeters. When I jumped into the render preview mode, I played a bit more with the principled hair shader, switching to melanin concentration, which is a more precise way to color your hair, and after a bit of experimentation, ended up with these values. Uh, so 0 0.8 for melanin, no tint, roughness of 0 0.6, and radial roughness of 6. Everything else I left as is, and it gave me this good enough base to test the final look of this beard particles. At this point, I played some more with the effects of the children particles, so I adjusted the uniform roughness to 0.4, raising the origin of the clumping curve, and also added more steps to this path, which will make the hair more subdivided into render. You can even add more randomness to the roughness, that will make it even more natural. And with that, I'm pretty happy how the result looks so far. In the next part we will finish up this beard that we started and I will also show you how to make those little white hair that I showed you at the beginning. Also if you liked this video share it on your social media and if you're interested in my Heroes of Bronze project visit the website heroesofbronze.com or you can go to my Gumroad or Patreon and support the project there. Until next time my friends, Martin out.